This is the best, most fun I have ever, ever, ever had on a podcast. This is a hit. This is Business Done Differently, a business show unlike any other with your not-so-typical host, the man in the yellow tux, Jesse Cole. Multitasking, Lee. What is your opinion on multitasking? Well, I think it's absurd. Multitasking to me is being able to do a lot of things at the same time badly. (laughs) So so, (laughs) that's what it is to me. Focus on one thing at a time where thought is required is the way to be successful. Excited to have Lee Cockrell on the Business Done Differently podcast. Lee is the former vice president of operations, Walt Disney World Resort. He led a team of over 40,000 cast members, and he's the author of some amazing books that we use here with our teams, Customer Rules, Time Management Magic, Career Magic, and Creating Magic. And Lee, you just passed over 1 million downloads with Creating Disney Magic podcast. Congratulations. Excited to have you on the show. Yeah, that was great. I uh, was wondering when we were going to get there, and my... Facilitator Jody said we hit it last Tuesday. Uh, that's an unbelievable accomplishment, but uh, I'm impressed by you. you continue to work very hard even after you're retired. I don't think it's a retirement, is it, Lee? Well, not really, but at work, you got to say, I enjoy it. So I, I was terrible at golf, so uh, <laughs> I, people ask me why I speak, and I say because people clap. Uh, so that's uh, that's the main reason. I love it. Well, excited to have you in the show, and we're going to start here with our first segment. excited or scared and it wants to say today what's something that's got you either excited or scared today well i don't get excited or scared very often but i did uh, finalize uh, my uh, time i'm going to spend in mexico in february and a month in italy in june and got all that set up today my wife and i are celebrating our 50th anniversary in june so we booked a house in tuscany wow congratulations awesome yeah. Outstanding. Beautiful. Well, Lee, now it's time for story time. Those were the days. And, you know, I know uh, you've shared your story with a lot of your listeners before, but, you know, what, what's, what's your story? And how can you, you share it in a way that can provide some lessons for our listeners? Well, my story is probably I surprised myself. I achieved about 20 times more than I ever even thought I could. As I told people before, I grew up on a farm in Oklahoma. We didn't even have indoor plumbing. My mother was married five times. I've been adopted twice, got my name Cockrell when I was 16. Uh, One of her husbands had money, so I got to go to college, but I forgot to go to class. So uh, I I flunked out, went in the Army. When I got out of the Army, I got a job at the Washington Hilton, and that started my career. And 35 years later, I was running Disney World. So that's uh, my story. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> wow, amazing. And I know there's a lot more to it, but you definitely condensed it. Now, other than obviously your story is uh, remarkable on the accomplishments that you've had and how much you've risen up, risen up, but what's a business story or someone's story that inspires you? Well, you know, I think even for my career, Bill Marriott and Walt Disney both were some of the nicest. I didn't meet Walt Disney, but Bill Marriott was one of the nicest people ever. I uh, joined Disney or Marriott when they had 32 hotels. Today they have 6,000. So you can imagine, it was a small company. My friends at Hilton told me not to go with Marriott. They're never going to be anything. They're never going to be a big company. <laughs> and oh, wow. uh, I did join them. We used to see Mr. Marriott frequently. He would come and visit us, and t- I spent a lot of time with him. And, uh, you know, just to see that success from one generation. He became president when he was 32 and retired when he was 82. He ran the company for 60 years, and uh, or 50 years. And uh, just to see that, and he's one of the most humble, nicest people you'll ever spend any time with. And uh, I like to see that from somebody that's got so much money and so much power, but he was always nice to everybody. Now, obviously, just uh, being nice and being humble, but what else made Bill Marriott such a great leader? Well, he was pretty relentless. Uh, I, as I always tell people, you know, and he was very focused on the basics. And I think he always remembered the basics of friendliness cleanliness, courtesy, those were the things he pounded on all the time. When you think about a hotel you want to stay in, your friendliness and cleanliness are two of the big things. And uh, systems, I mean, he had systems in place that made sure that we were able to uh, actually perform every day the same way so the guest had consistent service and didn't get any surprises. And he was a tough taskmaster. He really made, he, get, he let you know when he wasn't happy about something. Now, did you see him change at all throughout uh, the development working with him? Obviously, 50 years in the business. How did you see him develop and change? 
I never saw him change from how he treated people. Wow. I'm sure he, you know, he he had to surround himself by a lot of finance people and uh, development people and all that, but I never personally saw him change a bit from being just and I think by, you know, you are who you are and he just kept being that kind of person and he I put in my last book Career Magic, I said when you become a big deal, don't. And <laughs> That's great. he was a big deal, but he didn't you would have never known it. It's amazing. Now, I, I really want to move into the other segments, but I believe so much, you know, you became a great leader, and I think it's so much by the people you surround yourself, and while you weren't able to surround yourself with Walt Disney and you weren't able to meet him, how did his leadership kind of continue on after he passed? Did, did you feel it throughout the organization? Well, you know, yes. I uh, say Walt Disney said the same thing as Bill Merritt. He said, if you guys will just keep it friendly and clean after I'm gone, everything will be fine. And, you know, you think about the basics in life, and I think so many of us forget the basics. Uh, just like basics we think about for raising our children, courtesy and, you know, honesty and integrity. And uh, those are the things that make you successful in life. And so uh, he had a lot of courage. You know, he, would t he took huge risks. Mm -hmm. That's something I admired about him. I don't know if I would have had the guts to do that at that level, but he mortgaged his house and, he went bankrupt a couple of times and picked himself up and just kept going, and that's pretty amazing. That's what you see in a lot of these people that started those big companies in the late 20s. Bill Marriott started them, uh, Walt Disney started them, Ryder Truck started them, and these guys started these businesses just to eat dinner and survive. And uh, they work so hard that they today they're still standing. Hilton, Conrad Hilton started in 1923. Uh, same thing. So wow. kind of the same uh, hard work and uh, relentless, staying on tra staying on track. And, and it's amazing too that the you know simplifying the friendliness and the cleanliness. It's so simple, <laughs> but you know why can't everyone do it? I mean, how many times do you go into restaurants or other stores and there's trash and it's just dirty and they didn't care about it? It's everywhere, and the two simple things have kept two of the most long-standing successful companies. Sounds easy, but very few companies are doing it. Yeah, I think the reason they don't do it because the manager or whoever's in charge doesn't set high enough ex expectations. They don't know what they want, so then the people don't know what they want, yeah. and therefore they don't do it. And uh, Raise your expectations, you'll get better performance. 100%. Outstanding. All right, Lee. Now, you are very, you put a lot of things out on Twitter, a lot of great quotables. And this, this section is called Deets About the Tweet, and where you have to explain one of your tweets on Twitter. So you wrote this Catch the imagination of a customer and give them reason to remember you. What do you mean by that? Yeah, well, I, I, you know, even in my life, I think if you uh, are not focused on yourself and you're focused on your customers and you go out of your way to make sure they remember you by the way you treated them, the way you made them feel, the way you served them, that you're so different than everybody else they run into, that's, for me, the difference. And I hear that a lot. I I don't consider myself a big deal. I, uh, I think I have a fair amount of humility. I, I love taking care of other people. In fact, I meet people all the time. The other day I was in an airport and uh, a little girl tapped me on the shoulder and said, are you Lee Cockrell? And I said, I turned around. There were three girls there, 14, 12, and 10. And I said, yes, I am. She said, well, I said, who are you? And her dad stepped in and said, Lee, they know you because they are homeschooled and they have to listen to your podcast every Tuesday morning and do a report on what they learned. Wow. And, you know, when I hear those kind of things, uh, the feedback where whatever you do helps other people, that's that's a lot of fun. And in fact, uh, as I told you, I said, why do I give speeches? Because I want to be loved. <laughs> and people, people clapped. We all want to be somebody. And uh, it just makes me feel good about what I'm doing. So that's kind of the, my story. Well, you're joking, but, it, you know, it gives you purpose and it's rewarding. And if you can get that every day, there's nothing better than that. So I'm 100% with you. Yeah. Excellent. All right, we're going to move on to a, a slight game. This is a new one, and it's called It's Social Media Stupid. Really? And literally, big thing on social media right now just happened uh, between Papa John's, the NFL, and other pizza companies jumping in. Not sure if you saw it, but basically Papa John's blamed the NFL for their loss in sales. And they said the anthem protests have caused a loss in sales. And then DiGiorno came out, and DiGiorno posted better pizza, better sales, it's DiGiorno. So I want to see what side are you taking with Papa John's coming out like this? You got the NFL, you got DiGiorno jumping on positively. What are your thoughts on this? Well, I saw it and I read a few of the posts online and uh, 
I guess I would never blame somebody else for my business <laughs> failures. He made those kind of deals about how he was going to give pizza away and all that kind of stuff. And I think the worst thing you can do in life is to start blaming somebody else for your own problems. And like I said, I could have blamed my mother for a lot of things, but I figured out I better just look forward, not backward. And uh, so I, th I think it's a bad idea. To, yeah. now, I think you, it's a bad business idea to blame other people. Now, we have too much of that going on in the country now. It's uh, never anybody's fault. Yeah, you put it on yourself. Now, do you applaud DiGiorno for having fun and coming and getting involved, or no? What are your thoughts on them? Yeah, I mean, I think you got to be careful with that. But, uh, you know, we Southwest Airlines does that a little bit. They punch the competition a little bit. I think you just got to be careful how you do it and not get too mean. If it's funny, well, there you go. 100%. But business people are going to take advantage of that stuff, and uh, I, I'm not so sure I would do it, but... Uh, I don't think that was very difficult. That was not a very mean thing to do or very hard to do. No, so. Not at all. All right, beautiful. Lee, we're a new segment. Haven't done with anyone before. It's called The Profit. And if you're familiar with the show, The Profit, with Marcus Lemonis, they bring in this expert, and he comes to actually go to a company, and he fixes it. He invests his money, and he fixes the business. So if you were going to be a one-time host of this show, come into a certain business, invest your money, and fix the business, what business would it be? Well, he seems to know about everything about every business, and I think he's probably going down that same basic path of understanding, uh, looking hard at the service, uh, the product, and uh, how, the, how it's delivered. But if, for me, I'm, I would probably stick to something I know a lot about, so it would probably be any retail business or a restaurant or a hotel where I can get in pretty quick and figure out what the problems are. That's, Lee, you know, I'm, I would love to see that show. You coming in and do, I think it would add a twist to the Marcus Lamona <laughs> show. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to see I, if we can I, make that happen. I kind of do it every time I go out to dinner. I say, wow, I could fix this place in about one week. <laughs> yeah, we just need a camera. It's, you know, they had John Taffer out there, Marcus Lamonis, and now Lee Cockrell taking over. So we'll look into <laughs> that. Excellent. All right, you passed the profit. I like that. Now we're going on to the Culture Club. <laughs> But I know this is right up your alley, and it's the best practices of companies who are creating amazing cultures. What are some things that you've seen, either in your experience or other businesses? I saw you wrote, uh, you tweeted this, be deliberate about introducing new employees to your culture. Can you explain that and maybe explain another business that's doing a great job with their culture? Well, yeah, I mean, I could give you three kind of perfect words to remember for every business out there, and that's the companies that are great. They, the quote is, hire them right train them right and treat them right and uh, you know when people do that and the culture is about treating people right and uh, making everybody feel special and making sure everybody's getting the right training development so you can build their self-esteem and self-confidence make them believe in themselves but if you don't hire the right people you're already behind the eight ball and that's the most important thing any business can do is hire them right because when you hire people with a great attitude and right and even if they don't have the skill they got the right attitude passion and that you can train them and they'll be great and uh, then make sure you train them. Education is probably the most important thing we miss out on so much. And it's only it's a it's the door that unlocks the future is education. And then uh, treating people respectfully and right. And there's a lot of that not going on very well in America. So I got two two things to unpack there. What do you think is the the best way to introduce employees to a culture? And then how do you know when it's enough as far as training? I mean, I just went to a, a hotel recently, and they spent six months training before the even hotel was open. And you could tell. But how do you know how much is enough? So two things. How do you introduce someone to your culture, the best way to do it? And then how do you know how much training is enough? Well, I think introduction to your culture, it's the, the leadership at the top. I mean, we at Disney, we have eight hours of introductory called traditions where you hear for eight hours about the company what we're trying to achieve our expectations the history of the company how we treat people what our expectations are around how we treat people honesty integrity so they get a big dose of that and then I think our managers live it you know every manager out there they're gonna see the manager practicing those same things so it's a matter of uh, as we said leadership starts at the top you know it it's like a it, it rolls downhill and uh, I would say that is the main uh, thing you got to do is be clear. Clarity of expectations and making sure you people understand uh, what they're getting into before they take the job. And uh, I don't think a lot of companies must do that very well. And the other question was what? Was, and how, you know, how do you introduce someone? What's the best way to introduce someone to your culture? Yeah, well, I think uh, that is you've got to you've got to know what you first. You got to know what you want, 
and I don't even know if a lot of companies know what they want. And I tell people all the time to write down your expectations. It might be six, ten, twelve, and go over those with every single person. And we do that at Disney. And at the end of those sessions, about 25% of the people get up and walk out and decide they don't want to work for the company because they don't like the level of expectations we have about excellent performance. And you probably so, see that as a, that's probably a good thing. If people are leaving right there, oh, it's, it's great. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, we love it. <laughs> it's like Zappos paying people to leave after their training, and I think very yeah, exactly. few people do that. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Good. Good analogy. Yeah, and good uh, comparison there. Yeah. Excellent. All right, now to a game, and this game is called Love It or Leave It. So basically, I'm going to give you a name of a business, and you got to say whether it's a business you love or you kind of push it aside right now. So basically, if you're kind of going in to invest in a company, do you love it or should you leave it? So we'll start right now with Under Armour, which obviously has had some huge losses recently. Yeah, I have one Under Armour shirt. I don't know much about it. I personally don't buy it. So that wouldn't be anything I'd invest in. My old ragged T-shirts are just fine. All right. So all right, Under Armour. So now American Airlines. American Airlines, I have gone online and I've personally uh, said that I'll never fly American if I can miss not doing it. They messed me up twice, cost me a thousand dollars once, and the last time they almost made me lose my flight because of the way they treated me with arrogance at the gate. And I actually posted on that that I think they got serious problems with attitude and uh, reliability. Wow! So that's my problem. So who who is your airline if you're not American Airlines? Well, I I fly to mainly Delta and Southwest. Okay. And uh, Southwest, I. Have when I know I have to get there, I fly Southwest. <laughs> if there's weather or winter, because they somehow they hustle, they get the plane in, they get it out, go on time. You come in late and go out on time anyway, and make it. So I like their I like the employees' attitude and how much they love their company, and that transfers into how quick they can turn a plane around. Outstanding. You know, I'm still blown away by all the airlines that they think selling you credit cards in the middle of your flight is something that the customers want. You know, yeah, I mean, that's it's amazing. annoying. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants that, and they're going through and doing it, and it's just crazy. It's so short-term thinking, in my opinion. All right, so moving on, yeah. Airbnb. Airbnb, uh, I have not tried one. My son is a big user. I suspect we will. I think it's a great concept. Uh, I think they're just going to have to watch that they've got a, uh, some sc- kind of way they inspect these places and figure out that they're, they're good. My son had one in Japan, which was a total disaster, dirty, filthy place. So <laughs> I think the businessman probably is not going to go there, but family's trying to save money, absolutely. So you're going with a love it on Airbnb? Yeah, I'll say I like it plus plus. <laughs> okay, beautiful. All right, LinkedIn. LinkedIn, I like a lot. I get a lot of business from LinkedIn. I have a lot of contacts with LinkedIn. I would say I have, on average, 10 to 15 people a day connect with me on LinkedIn. I have about 7,000 on there now, followers, and uh, it's a good way for me to get my message out to business people and to also uh, find uh, help when I need it from somebody who's an expert. So I like LinkedIn a lot. I love You've actually set up a new category in this, where it's love it and leave it. You're going like it with pluses, Lee. So I love this. You've actually defined the game in a new way. All right, last. I guess I can't, I can't love Airbnb until I stay in one. Probably. No, yeah. All right, final two here. Uber. Uber I love. I use it all, all the time. I'll probably quit renting cars in a lot of cities because I uh, just was in Nashville. used it five or six times. And I it was perfect. They were on time. My wife used it the other morning. She pre-scheduled it to go to the airport right on time. Great driver. Good. Beautiful. Love it. Strong log. Final one, Olive Garden. Olive Garden. My wife and I go to Olive Garden all the time because we like the soup and salad for lunch. <laughs> and we love soup and salad for lunch. And I have spaghetti and uh, sausage or meatballs. So I'd say on balance, I love it. Oh, that's dead. You know, you think about companies too, like Olive Garden. You know, the things that people love, why don't they just amplify it? A lot of times they try all these other things, do what they do best, and love it. If it's the soup and salad, if it's the unlimited breadsticks, if it's the all you can eat pasta, do more of it. You know, it seems that's so all my wife gets. That's yes. all she gets every single time, and I always get spaghetti and sausage or meatballs. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know there was no grading on that, but I think you officially passed. I'll the say love. love. We love it. We love it at lunch. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. Well, you passed to love it or leave it. You're, Lee, you are flying right now with this. All right, we're moving on to different strokes. Now, what's one view that you have of a business or a business in general that's different than most people? Uh, My view of a business is different. I would say my 
theory on the businesses that are different are the ones who actually totally want to understand that everything matters. Uh, you know, when I look at a restaurant or a business or anybody I do business with, I am always thinking, you know, they de- they don't believe everything matters because they didn't answer the phone right, the parking lot was dirty, uh, the trash was on the ground. I just did some work for a, a company in a grocery store business, and I found trash in every driveway, and I had a long talk with them about that. Everything matters for companies that are great. 100%. And until you believe that, uh, you won't be great because you got to be upset about every little thing that's not perfect. So maybe mo- a lot of people don't think everything matters and they just focus on some things where the reality is everything, every impression, everything people see, everything matters. Absolutely. That's who you are. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Beautiful. All right. Now I'm going to challenge you here. This is this game called is called Fail and Tell. Now, it's where a guest shares a failure in their business. Now, I know it's probably easy to go back to your hotel days or even your ones at, at Disney World. But how about a recent failure, something either in your speeches or your podcast or a book potentially? What's something that you thought you failed at or you learned from? Well, I had some partners that I worked with, and we tried to do a a couple of public seminars and uh, sell tickets and get sponsors. And uh, it turned out not we didn't get much attendance, and I didn't really make any money on it. And uh, it was kind of a waste of my three days. And uh, I thought we would do better than we did. And, uh, I learned a lot about uh, the difficulty of getting sponsors and also that you think you're hot stuff, but to sell tickets and get people out there and reach people is very difficult. <laughs> and that was a good lesson for me, and it just happened last week. Oh, wow. Yeah, we know all about that with uh, honing baseball teams, the key to selling tickets. And it's obviously a challenge, but it's ironic. One of our last guests, Joe Calloway, said that was one of his biggest failures. They promoted an event like crazy. They put a ton into it. And they sold one ticket. <laughs> so yeah, well, we 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 spent ten, twelve thousand dollars on promoting it and sold you know a couple hundred tickets, but that wasn't nearly enough. Yeah, well, it's better than one, so I'm, I'm impressed, Lee. All right, moving, yeah. <laughs> moving on to one word. What do you think is the most important word in business? One word. Oh, I think there's only one word: trust. Ooh. I mean, for the employees, from the boss and to the customer, trust. Outstanding. That's great. Beautiful. All right, moving on to a fun game, Lee. It is called it is Price is Right. So I know you've seen the vintage Price is Right. I'm going to share interesting numbers in business or in uh, just a few different business questions, and you got to guess, but you got to remember, you got to guess under. The goal is in Price is Right to guess under, not over. Are you ready for this? And what am I, and what am I trying to guess? You're guessing, you're guessing the price or the, the numbers. So basically, it's the Price is Right. I'm going to give you some facts in business, All right. and then you got to guess the number and try to come under. All right, so the first okay. question. This is the price of the most expensive book on Amazon, 103 Amazing Facts About the Black Indian of the Western Hemisphere. What do you think the price of that book is? I would say $147. You're close. $250,000 that book is being sold what? for. <laughs> yes. Is that a... Uh collector's antique book or what? I think there's only a handful of them and I, there might even be one and it's sold for 250000 on Amazon right now. So you were just a little bit short on your guess. That's <laughs> interesting. I'm going to look that up and see when it was published. Wow. If you could sell a few of those, you'd be all set. So, yeah. Uh, all right. The average amount of money family spends on takeout food per year. Oh, gosh. Let's see. Do any more? I would say about uh, average family. Yes. Uh... Fifteen hundred dollars. Oh, close. Three thousand and eight dollars a year. Amazing. Wow. That's spending, and it's it's increasing dramatically. All right. Sixty nine percent of Americans have less than this dollar amount in their savings. So sixty nine percent of Americans have less than this dollar amount in their savings. A thousand dollars. Nailed it, Lee. You are the first person to get it exactly right of all the contests. I'm going to end on that because you just you just won prices right. I've never seen that happen. So. You nailed yeah. it. Luke. Great work. I just saw the other day that they said that uh, most people, if they got a four hundred dollar bill, couldn't pay it. Oh, that's unbelievable! Unbelievable. All right. Well, Price is Right is over. You won. You actually broke the game, which is great. Now we are on to all in investment. If you could invest in one company, all in, what would it be? Uh, from what I know in my history, I'd say a Marriott. <laughs> well played. All right. I like that. Excellent. It was $127 today. When I joined them, it was about equivalent to today, about a dollar. 
Wow, that would have been a good investment. Outstanding. Yeah. All right, yeah. now the bit the business cemetery next. A lot of companies have been joining the business cemetery. We just saw Toys R Us. You know, obviously we've seen all the other ones, the blockbusters, the circuit cities. What company do you think may be joining the business cemetery next? Well, I think they're already half what got one foot in the ground as Kmart and Sears. We know that, but uh, um, I would have to think a little more deeply about food concepts. They're, they're coming so fast. I see them closing every day. They open, and uh, m- three months later, they're closed. And and so I don't know. But I would say, you know, retail. It's going to be retail, and it may be. Uh, we know Kmart and Sears, but I, other retailers are going to be the ones going down, and and department store kind of businesses because we see Amazon's just killing everybody. Do you think Walmart's going to be able to stay up with them? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but, I think they'll cut out their niche, and uh, and uh, I don't. I'm not sure Amazon can compete with the lo- prices, lower prices, and that's a whole market for Walmart is the lower prices, and they can really drive those down deep. Yeah, it'll be an interesting battle to see, and hopefully, you know, some of these retail companies can either get picked up by them or helped out because there's a lot yeah. of retail companies out there, and I'd be scared of Amazon and Walmart right now. So I'm with you. Outstanding. Yeah. All right, tool time, Lee. We're on to tool time. Uh, what is one in, important tool that you have in your business toolbox, or that you think everyone should have in their business toolbox? Well, I think the one that's been most important for me is uh, having the ability to be a good planner. And that's why I have you with my Samsung Galaxy 8 phone and my day timer, my day planner. Yep. That's what I use to not only look ahead to think about what I should be doing next week, next month, next year, but also to look back and think about every day what I didn't do so well yesterday so I can do it better next time. And so for me, planning is the name of the game. And uh, that's where I get ahead of the game, I think, with a lot of people. I. I'm booking more and more and more business because I'm figuring out how to reach those people before they think about using me. And so I would say if you got good planning skills, and most people don't. <laughs> Time management magic. It's all in the book. Now, do you look back at the end of a day and actually review your day and what you accomplished and what you still need to accomplish? Oh, I, every morning before I start the next day, I think about yesterday, what I could have done better, how I could have said that better, what I should have said to that client instead of what I said, what price I should have quoted instead of which I did. <laughs> and uh, I think a reflection is a very powerful way to make sure you don't make the same mistakes over and over, is to go back and think through your day. Even thinking about how I said something to my wife, I could have said it much nicer. And next time, I probably will. So. Wow. All right. We're getting to the home stretch. A few more games, a few more questions. We're going to have fun with Business Jeopardy now. I'm going to give an answer, Lee, and you have to answer with a question. All right? We're going to have fun with this. So the categories are music, theme parks, which you know, hotels, restaurants, and books. So I think they're pretty in your sweet spot here. And the money you, you can wager is real money. If you get it wrong, I will collect it, and it will go to the good of uh, this podcast. Are you ready? <laughs> All right. Would you like to take music, theme parks, hotels, restaurants, or books? Which category first? Oh, I'll try hotels, I guess. All right. This is an easy one. How much would you like to wager? Oh, I'll get wager 10 bucks. 10 bucks. The, the largest hoteler, hotelier in the world. With now over 6,000 hotels. Who is it? What is Marriott? Nailed it. That was an easy one. You're 10 bucks <laughs> richer. All right. That was too easy for you. Now, music, theme parks, restaurants, or books? Uh, I'll go restaurants. Okay. This restaurant chain did $11.6 billion in U.S. sales, and it's ranked number three behind Starbucks and McDonald's. Uh, Starbucks and McDonald's. Uh, what, what is your wager? What is your wager on this one? I'll go ten dollars. I'll right. be <laughs> nice for you. Number three. I don't know the answer to that. I don't think. I could say. I don't know. I'll pass. All right. It is. What is Subway? Subway is the number. Yeah. Three. Are they? Wow. Yes. Yep. Number. All right. Nice. So, I had no idea. Yeah, pretty impressive. How about theme parks now? You ready for this? We'll okay. Probably another $10 wager. You want to go higher? You know theme parks. Yeah. 10's fine. All right. The fourth most visited theme park in the world. The fourth? Uh, I would say one, two, three. I, Magic Kingdom. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, how about. Uh, Disney Shanghai. 
Plus, I strategically, Disney has seven of the top ten, but the first one that's not Disney is number four. Universal Studios in Japan is number four. Yes. How are they? Wow. Yes. All right, we'll, we'll go to this last one here. We'll go to books. All right? And I'm guessing, right. um, you want to do it? We'll do a $5,000 wager on this one, predicted right. by the host. <laughs> this author sold the most books of any other author in 2016 with 4.4 million books. Ooh. 4.4 million. Sounds like the Bible. I don't, uh, I don't, I guess I don't. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, I'll pass on that one too. What, who was J- it? J.K. Rowling with Harry Potter. Oh, wow, well, of course. Yes, I excellent. All right, I think you still. No, have- Disney had the opportunity to own all of that. Really? And you- Harry Potter and turned it down years ago. They said it would never be anything. Unbelievable. And I think Universal Studios now owns the, the rights because they had the Harry Potter world, oh. right? Is that correct? Oh, yeah. It's yeah. increased their business dramatically. Oh, yeah. It's it's fascinating. Amazing. Wow. Mm. Well, I guess, yeah. I, I think Disney's won more than they've lost. <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. All right. Let's go to Magic Moment. What's one moment, Lee, you'll never, you'll never forget? moment that always stands out in your life. Well, I would have to say when my son was born, <laughs> that's pretty big deal. Uh, 100%. Yeah. That's great. All right. Now, a mirror moment. What's one moment that really made you question your business or your life? A really aha moment for you. Well, it was my wife almost died about eight years ago, and I had to take care of her for a year and a half. And uh, two things happened. Uh, I found out I wasn't as strong as I thought I was. I ended up with anxiety and depression and had to get treated by a psychiatrist for a year and a half to get out of it because it was horrible. And uh, it really made me question, uh, uh, was being so big deal in business as important as I thought it was? I stopped doing everything I did and uh, focused on that. And and um, and as I told my wife, honey, I loved you more than I thought I did. <laughs> so wow. it really made me re- reflect. And I mean, our relationship is... Ten times better now since we went through that together. It's amazing. Both of your moments, first time, was both on life and on death that they came together. Yeah. That's interesting. It really, really is. Yeah, boy, that was tough. Wow, I can only imagine. All right, we're going to go to another quick game, Flip the Script. Now, basically, Lee, you become the host on the Business Done Differently show, and you can ask me one question. Anything you want, you're the host. All right, so if you could live in any place in the world, where would that be? Oh, wow, that, that's a good one. Uh the political answer would be, I love right now where I am here in Savannah. Uh, absolutely love it. But I think the, the real answer is, I think I need to travel more. I mean, I, I, Lee, how many countries have you traveled to? I think I was counting them up there, 43. All right. So I think to answer that question appropriate, I had become a cultured. I haven't even been to, I haven't been outside the United States other than a few islands. So um, I will come back to you within a year with an appropriate <laughs> answer. I am politically you get, declining you that. You better get... You better get moving. I got to get moving. I got to get moving. I know. But that, that, that's a it, good question. It will change who you are when you travel. I, oh, 100%. I'm sure. I mean, how has it changed you? Oh, I think I have appreciation for people all over the world. I, You know, we don't like the governments, but the people are sweet. Just came back from Russia. Just came back from Hong Kong. Just came back from Hungary, uh, Czech Republic, Slovakia. People are just sweet as can be, nice, and raising their kids and having a great time, drinking wine, enjoying dinner. Wow. And uh, that's, that's what you learn. I think a lot of my friends I grew up with, they haven't been anywhere, and they that's why we have so much of this racism and bigotry. And they're, Everybody's a problem except white people. Yeah. <laughs> you know? is, it mostly, so, is it mostly it just gives you a more appreciation as, a, as opposed to expectations? Yeah, I mean, uh, everybody's the same. And uh, we try to put these labels on people and uh, you can't put a label on people people are who they are it's individuals wow. individuals do great things and individuals do bad things all right well now you completely made me feel like i am not traveling enough i need to travel now so lee i, I when we finish this i gotta start booking trips i'll work on that all, all right, right. <laughs> all right quotable hmm. what's one quote that you live by well my father-in-law taught me this he was an admiral in the navy and his quote was do your best and forgive yourself mm. nice Love it. I love that. I mean, when I think about it, did I do my best today, even though maybe I didn't get what I wanted, but I did the best I could. And so I'm not going to go tonight and not be able to sleep because of I did my best. That's, yeah. that's great. Outstanding. All right. Finishing up here, we got debatable. Wrong. All right. We're going to debate one business issue. And a lot of people talk about it now, and especially you who studied planning and time management and leading. Multitasking. Lee, what is your opinion on multitasking? Well, I think it's absurd. 
it, it's multitasking to me is being able to do a lot of things at the same time badly. <laughs> so, so that's what it is to me. So we're not going to focus debate this on at all. one thing. Focus on one thing at a time where thought is required is the way to be successful. That's absolutely. You know, every time I assume we're going to get in a debate and we're not, I am 100% with you. Everyone says, I'm multitasking. Well, that means you're not doing anything well. <laughs> you exactly. Gotta, yeah, you got to be able to do exactly. deep work. And, and everyone in Watching every, television and trying to talk to your wife does not work. Yeah. L listening to music while texting someone, while writing an email, while, while doing something else. It's important. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. Unbelievable. Right. All right. Beautiful. This is Fishing for Compliments. I'm going to read this. This is a, a review of your Creating Magic book. While much of the book is intuitive, we no longer follow our intuition. So this book serves as a gentle reminder. Instead of following the latest how to succeed in business guru, we need to step back and tell our own story with our own personality while taking the best care of our customers in a way that only we can. What are your thoughts on that review, Lee? Well, I, I think that's all that matters. You know, I, I tell people we've tried everything else. Now it's time to take care of your customers. <laughs> I mean, this is the only thing that matters. And if you've got a, if you got a bad product, it doesn't even matter. But uh, we'll, we'll, suspect, we'll, we'll suppose people have the right product. And then at the end of the day, you got to do what you got to do. I mean, I take good care of my customers no matter what they want. I always think about, am I being enough for my customers? Are they saying good things about me behind my back? And uh, so that's what I try to do every day. And I get letters every day from people saying, you were the easiest and the best person we ever worked with because you were so easy to work with and you were so flexible. Love it. So, yeah. How often do you look at reviews and how much do you take those to heart? I don't look at reviews so much as I get a note or an email from somebody and and they tell me, I just got another one here. A guy just told me, he heard me say once, uh, if you want to be successful, you got to take risk. He said that changed his whole life, that one quote. Oh, and he. Wow. He quit his job, sold his house, and applied to Disney, and he just sent me a note that he got hired. <laughs> oh, that's outstanding. <laughs> As a manager, and he's so excited he can't stand it. Oh, when he said that one little quote, you know, and sometimes that's what it takes. Yeah, exactly. All right, now now that's what I call service. I know you have probably hundreds of them. I know you have a favorite French restaurant you go to as well that you love, but what is the best personal customer service experience you've ever had? Well, I think when I think about it, I go back to my wife's illness. The doctor came in the morning. She had been sick for a year and a half, and she had a colostomy bag, wound vac, and all this stuff. And we were down to the only the colostomy left, and he walked in. We'd never met this man before, and he looked at my wife. He took three weeks to study her file because he was going to take this colostomy down. And he said, Priscilla, I want to tell you, you're going to be just fine. You're the kind of patient I love to fix. And... Actually, every one of my patients is a gift from God, and I go to the chapel and get extra help before I do surgery, and I'm going to open you, do the surgery, and close you. You won't have to worry about one single thing. And when I heard, you know, who says that? Do you ever heard your doctor say that? Never. And my wife immediately in front of me got better physically and mentally, and the surgery took place three months later. He came out. It was supposed to be four hours. It was nine-and-a-half-hour surgery. And he said, I said, hey, Paul, what took you so long? I shouldn't have said that. He said, Lee, what took me so long? I did what I told you I was going to do. I fixed her. So, uh, you know, that that's when you want to make sure you're getting outstanding service when your life's on the line. Wow. And uh, I think a lot of businesses' lives are on the line because they don't think deeply enough about taking extraordinary care, not just good care. And uh, that's by hiring the right people, training them, and treating them right. And that's the way you get it done. That's amazing. I think you make a great point there. I mean, if everyone looked at, I say this all the time, you know, what's the value of that customer of life for customer for life for you? And and if you actually valued your customer's life, you know, not just hey, they're buying some food from us, they're buying some, but think like this is their life. Doctors, the best doctors do that. Why can't someone doing that that's serving a hot dog or selling a at the grocery store? It sounds crazy, but it seems like it would work. They can. Yeah, yeah, that's outstanding. Yeah, you excellent. get what you want. <laughs> that's for sure. All right, uh, Lee, what's the best gift you ever received? Well, that's an easy one. Uh, two years ago, uh, my granddaughter said, "Pappy, she was uh, let's see, she's 19 now. She was 16 or 17. She's Pappy. I didn't get you anything for Christmas because I know you don't want anything. You don't need anything. You got enough socks and underwear." <laughs> and she said, "So I wrote a letter just telling you how much I love you." And so that's about as good as it gets. 
Wow, just a personal letter. Now, now you are getting a lot of socks now, I heard. Is that correct? A lot of socks. <laughs> I've got 160 pair, I think, now. <laughs> I love it. I'll have to get you some Savannah banana socks. It's out of control. I <laughs> love it. Oh, that's great. All right, final two things here. This is the Survivor Challenge. So basically, I'm going to ask really subjective questions. They're Survivor-like questions about your favorite things. And if you don't get them right, the interview's over right then. But you're probably yeah. going to get them right because I'm going to have fun with them. All right, uh, your favorite book, Lee? Well, I'd have to say it's my book, Creating Magic, because it's in 17 languages now. It just came out in Russian, and it's selling at the same pace after big coming out eight years ago it sales have actually increased so i love it power of word of mouth marketing love it all right now you can't choose yourself here but the favorite author i like stephen covey he's the one that really caught my attention back in the late 80s about how to th think about being excellent instead of just good and so i like him a lot and i was sorry to, the way he had the accident and died it was terrible yeah all right your favorite business well, I'd say the hotel business. That was my whole life, yep. and uh, I love it. Excellent. All right, favorite movie, maybe the favorite movie for you and Priscilla. Well, my favorite movie is Lion King <laughs> uh, because I thought it had a powerful story, and I, it's the first real Disney movie I saw. I'd never gone to those kind of animated movies, and I saw that, and it was so well done, and the music and the story, uh, it was just a I, – I think about it a lot. It's great. Fabulous movie. You'll love this, Lee, but before every single game, we get a baby that's usually uh, six months or younger, and we, br we bring her family out, and we have the baby. We put the baby in a banana costume, and we bring the baby to home plate, and we put all the players on their knees with their hands up in the air and hold the baby up and say, Na, Savania, na, <laughs> Exactly. That's how we start. It's called the banana baby. In every game, that's what launches the game. And I'll tell you, we win a lot of games at home, and I think it's because of the Lion King-inspired banana baby. So I'm right there and with every, you. every one of the people watching knows what you're doing. Yes, and they're usually <laughs> laughing and confused all at once, so it's a win-win. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. All right. Uh, two last two favorite, favorite restaurant. Well, I have a new one in the last year. It's called Urbane 40. It's in Orlando. It's uh, opened by the guy who runs the uh, Moroccan Pavilion at Epcot. He and his son opened it, and it's just outstanding. It's kind of got a great French chef. The food is so good. We just we go there like every other week. Outstanding. And your favorite color, Lee? Uh, it's blue. You know, ev uh, everyone keeps blue. getting the, everyone keeps getting this wrong. The answer is yellow. As I'm in a bright yellow tuxedo, Lee, no one well, gets this right. <laughs> I see you are, and it looks like everything on you is yellow. <laughs> That's for sure. That's for sure. All right, I'll still let you pass. That was uh, that was great. Excellent. All right, the final four, Lee. This is ends the show. Business done differently. What's something that you've done differently in your life to stand out? I think the thing I've done differently than I said. We need more teachers and less bosses. In my whole career, I've tried to be a teacher, to teach people instead of yelling at them, and to uh, with my family and with my employees and leaders. And uh, also, I think uh, I, I really think at the end of the day, if more people would focus on teaching, uh, we would just have uh, better performance, better success, uh, more people who are more successful and uh, less intimidated. Outstanding. All right. Now, what else? What else do you think makes someone stand out in business and in life? Well, the advice my wife gave me probably 30 years ago, and I tell the people this, the main important thing I would say to everybody, be careful what you say and do. Everyone's watching and judging you. And we see that in the paper every day now. Yeah. Be careful what you say and do because it will come back and bite you. Behave yourself. <laughs> so, so what makes someone stand out is pretty much behave themselves? I mean, what, what are you saying there? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, you got to be careful not to tell inappropriate jokes, not to offend somebody, to be more... Uh, uh, I mean, we're seeing it right now out of Hollywood and out of every major corporation, executives being fired right and left, kids getting on the Internet and posting inappropriate things on Facebook and then yep. not getting into college because the college, college checks it out. Be careful what you say and do. Uh, you know, there's no files anymore. It's on the Internet. And yes. once it's there, you're stuck. 100%. Now, you've already given some great quotes that you live by, but what's, if you were to say, the best advice you've ever received? What would it be? Uh, I would say don't underestimate what you can achieve. Mm, great. Really. Don't underestimate it because I think that's most of our problems is, you know, we had a bad life so we think we can't be anybody. And, in fact, uh, our brain is what's holding us back. We just don't realize we've got 40 or 50 years to learn and get better and be somebody. Uh, uh, yeah. 
Outstanding. The final question here, Lee, how do you want to be remembered? I would say I want to be remembered as a person who helped people, that I was available, and that uh, I helped people be better if they worked with me or were part of my family. Outstanding. And they had a better life because of it. Yeah. Excellent. Well, you certainly did that. Lee, you passed the Business Done Differently show, man. You offered some great advice, and you finished right there when you help people be better. And I just got to tell you, Lee, you are one of the most accessible business leaders out there. Uh, ability, you know, sent you a letter. We connected on email, literally met you down in Disney. And I know you're doing that to hundreds of people. So for me and everyone else that you're helping, you're mentoring, and you're leading, thank you. You do an amazing job, and you really are making a difference in the world. You're welcome. It was fun to do this today. Outstanding. Lee, how can people connect with you? I know you have your amazing podcast, great books, but how can people connect with you? Well, anything they want, whether they want the podcast or books, uh, the books you got to buy and the podcast is free, and it's at my website, leecockerell.com. Outstanding. We'll put that in the show notes. Well, Lee, thank you very much. It was a pleasure, and uh, congrats on everything you're doing and accomplishing. All right. You take care, Jesse. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Business Done Differently podcast. Make sure to subscribe on iTunes. And if you could leave a review, it would mean the world to me, especially five stars. But now we're releasing episodes every Monday and Thursday. So stay tuned. But until then, stop standing still, start standing out.